you know, sardines was once the dominant fishery in California. You know, when in the, during the heyday, Monterey was the sardine capital of the world, and sardines was the bread and butter of our our, our fishery. When uh, we got into the sardine issue, was when. Uh, the federal government, which was responsible for doing the surveys, started seeing declining, you know, substantial decline in sardine. But the problem was those fish had moved inshore. Seventy percent of our catch comes from inside three miles, and the NOAA boats didn't come in. They're, you know, big research vessels, so basically 70 to 80 percent of our catch is not getting counted. And it became really critical this last couple years when NOAA isn't seeing the fish, and we are, and yet we can't fish. One of the hardest things is on the crew, the crew to keep them busy year-round. When we had the sardines, we always had something to do year-round, and uh, we don't have that anymore. We started this, this plant here uh, 20 years ago, and uh, sardines was a big factor for us at that time. It was something to keep going, to keep the people working, and paying bills. The last four years, they've closed us down. We've got people at workforce that if we don't work, they leave. We had a crew of 120 people in the past, and now we're down to 50, 60, and it's hurt considerably. So we got involved in it, and the Department of Fish and Wildlife has also been helping us. And so they contributed their airplane, and they put their bi biologists on, and we also brought in our camera gear. We had, we had a, an aerial camera system that we loaned and we, we chartered the spotter pilot. So the spotter goes up and then they can document. And so that's been one of the key issues is quantifying the spotter pilot's estimates. What he says may be accurate to X degree. And we're trying to figure out what that X degree is so we can use that data as hard data. So we need to get a picture of the boat going toward the school so that we know which school is going to be targeted. And then the pilot will direct the fishermen to set around that school. And we need to have 100% or close to 100% capture. Then you could equate the circumference of that school on, in the photograph with the volume that was captured when you weigh it. And then you have the species composition. So that's how you put it together. And then you can say, well, that blob was 20 tons. We're doing it partly to improve the science and in cooperation both with the federal and state, uh, you know, fishery biologists, and we're doing it to save our lives. One of the frustrating parts of this is that sometimes we'll see the fish in the water and the airplane won't see the fish. I mean, in any given point in the day, I think we're going to see 75% more fish than what the airplane's going to see. Even if this is all validated, it's still not going to give an accurate nearshore assessment of what's really there because he's only going to see a percentage of what's there. But any percentage of an acknowledgement that there is nearshore fish is better than where we're at with management at this point. So we tried to time our inshore survey at the same time that they were running down offshore. They saw virtually no fish and we saw tens of thousands of tons of fish. And just having that evidence, even though it wasn't quantified yet, it triggered some alarm bells. So now, you know, the Southwest Fishery Science Center, which runs the surveys, has now gone back and they're trying to reanalyze how they can capture the near shore. So we're making progress, but in the meantime, you know, the industry's hanging by a thread. So we elected to volunteer for this work because we understand the importance of it. It's a, it's a big loss to us financially to, to donate our time, effort, fuel, expenses. It's, it's hard, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard on the crew, but you know, we have to look at the bigger picture and, and, uh, and look at the future and, and hopefully this is gonna help out down the road somewhere. I understood the importance of being able to just you know, make a living off of these forage fish and to continue to try to work in a sustainable fashion to keep fishing alive for not just our generation but generations beyond. Uh, our biggest misconceptions about fishermen is that they want to go out and kill every fish in the ocean. I think it's quite the contrary, that we want to 
make sure that stocks are managed well and, and, and that there's always gonna be fish. We talk a lot about best available science, but I really feel like we need to talk about best available common sense. I mean, it's uh, 15 boats of fish out of San Pedro here now that would, that would be involved in uh, CPS fisheries. And we fish a very, very small piece of water. They need to improve the science. And we're hoping that what we're doing, you know, is, is gonna help out.